How do we select a particular transducer? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So what are the things that we have to keep in our mind during the selection procedure of a particular transducer? Well, let's find out. So in the previous video, we learned for a fact that a transducer is a device that converts a physical quantity into an electrical signal. That is, a particular energy is being converted from one form to another. Here, we are converting a physical quantity into an electric signal. So while choosing a transducer for this particular purpose, we have to keep three things in our mind. Three main things are required for the selection procedure of a particular transducer. The first one being the input characteristics. The second one being the transfer characteristics. And the third one being the output characteristics. As simple as that. So first, let us see what all are the input characteristics by selection of a particular transducer. So under input characteristics, what we have to keep in our mind is first is the type of input that we are giving. That is what type of input are we giving to this particular transducer? Is it pressure? Is it stress? Is it temperature? So what is the input quantity that we're giving to this particular transducer? That is a type of input that we're giving. That is what is the physical quantity that we require to measure with this particular transducer? That is the type of input. Well now the next thing that we have to keep in our mind is operating range. Operating range is defined as the range of input values for which this particular transducer works. That is the range of values for which this particular transducer can detect a particular physical quantity. For example, if you are measuring the temperature, the range may be say from zero degrees to 100 degrees. So that is a range of input values that can be sensed with help of this particular transducer. So operating range, that is in what input range this particular transducer operates. And lastly, we have loading effects. So imagine we are measuring a particular physical quantity with a particular transducer. So a particular physical quantity is measured with this particular transducer. But whatever physical quantity is there, it must not be altered because of the presence of this particular transducer. That is, if we put a particular transducer to measure this physical quantity, it must not change this physical quantity in any way whatsoever. That is what you refer to as loading effect. That is when a transducer is connected, it should not change or modify the physical quantity that has to be measured in any way whatsoever. That is when a transducer is connected, there should not be any change in the physical quantity. That is there should not be any kind of a distortion because of the presence of this particular transducer. Therefore, these are the input characteristics that we have to keep in our mind during the selection procedure of a particular transducer. Next, let us see the transfer characteristics that we have to keep in our mind while the process of selection of a particular transducer. So the first thing is that there must be some kind of a transfer function. That is, there must be some kind of a function linking the input and the output values. That is, based on the input, we have to obtain an output. The output must not be independent of the input. That is, there must be a particular function Q0, which is the output of a particular transducer, which is a function of the input. So that is what you call as the transfer characteristics, transfer error. Now, the next thing we have to keep in our mind is the error and hysteresis. Error is simply the deviation of a measured value to the actual value. So imagine I'm measuring the temperature of this particular room with a thermometer. So let us imagine that the actual temperature of this room is say 28 degrees Celsius. But when I'm measuring it with a thermometer, I'm getting the value as 30 degrees Celsius. So there is a deviation from the actual value. That is the actual value is 28, but I'm measuring it as 30. So there's a two degrees Celsius difference in the measurement. So that is the error over here. That is, it is a deviation of the measured value from the actual value. That is error. Now, next thing is hysteresis. So hysteresis is very interesting. So now, let us assume that we are measuring force. That is, we are using a transducer to measure the force that is applied. 
so now let us take this particular transducer and now i'm slowly starting to apply force on this so now here i'm slowly gradually increasing the force so now while i'm increasing the force the output of this transducer will also increase like this it would increase like this okay so now i have reached a maximum value of force right now okay that is this particular point at this point the force is maximum now i am gradually decreasing the force on this particular transducer now i am slowly releasing the force so therefore as the force decreases the output of the transducer would be somewhat like this so here what you observe is that at this particular point at this particular point of input when we observe the output there's a small difference over here there's a small difference between the output while the force was being increased from a minimum value to a maximum value and when it was decreased from a maximum value to a minimum value so that difference is what we can deduce or get with the help of a hysteresis curve as simple as that that is hysteresis is a difference of the output while the particular input is first increased from a minimum value to a maximum value and then decrease from a maximum value to a minimum value that difference is what you refer to as hysteresis and the last thing under transfer characteristics is the response of this particular transducer to the environment to the environmental influences like distortion or rain or temperature difference or all those things so how vulnerable is this particular transducer to all these environmental influences so that is the last thing that we have to keep in our mind in transfer characteristics that is the response of a particular transducer to environmental influences so these are the things that we have to keep in our mind which come under the transfer characteristics and now the next thing that we have to keep in our mind while the process of selection of a particular transducer is the output characteristics so the first thing under output characteristic is the type of output that we are getting that is is the output a particular current value or is the output a particular voltage value what type of output are we getting from this transducer that is the first thing that is what type of output are we getting is it current is it voltage that is what comes on a type of output and now next one is the output impedance that is for the purpose of obtaining the output we have to place a particular load for the purpose of obtaining if if it is a current or a voltage whatever it is that we have to get as the output there must be a particular impedance value to obtain this particular output so therefore because of the presence of this impedance value there must not be any change in the measured value that is if i am measuring a particular force i am measuring the force that is applied let us imagine i am applying 5 newton of force on this particular transducer so this particular transducer has now measured 5 newton of force and now it has to provide an output which is an electrical signal and it has to give a particular voltage but for obtaining this voltage we have to connect a load over here so uh, the voltage corresponding to this particular 5 newton will be obtained at this particular load but here what we have to keep in our mind is that because of this particular load there must not be a change in the measured quantity that is if 5 newton of force is applied here i have to get the exact equivalent current equivalent or voltage equivalent of 5 newton here i should not get it as 4 newton or i should not get it as 6 newton because of the presence of this particular load that is what you refer to as the loading effect so we have to keep in our mind the loading effect so for an ideal transducer the output impedance must be equal to zero so the output impedance must be zero for an ideal transducer and last we have the useful range that is the range of output values that can be given with the help of a particular transducer so therefore these thus are the three main characteristics that we have to keep in our minds while during the process of selection of a particular transducer as simple as that so i hope you guys now have a clear understanding of how you can select a particular transducer and if you guys found this video informative do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos so stay tuned stay subscribed until next time i'll see you guys in the next video thank you